So happy to have you back for another episode of Norm Nathan's Vault of Silliness. Episode 92, for those of you keeping track at home. As promised, we will feature a swell music quiz from June 29th, 1995. Let's call this one AM Gold. The usual suspects of yours truly, Ed Mullen, Jack Hart, and Norm comprise the panel. Mike Epstein was producing. The pregame ritual of explaining the rules is here in all its glory and is revisited later for even greater clarification. The categories, rock and roll, musical comedy, jazz, big band, and the all-new Bible songs and Yiddish Freilux. The prize package ante has been upped. Not only will you receive a certificate of award, but a much-coveted Peeper's keyring. Later, the question arises regarding the keyring supply, and what if we run out? But fear not, as I put forth the best solution. Another non-musical question is posed. What happens if the Tobin Bridge toll-takers run out of change? This discussion was prompted by Norm giving an on-air hello to one of them. The game begins a little differently as Ed and Norm give some starting questions before we take calls. And, for rock and roll, it will be multiple-choice, 70s themes question night. Get two out of three and move on to the next round. If my count is correct, we took 38 calls on this two-sided quiz fest. And here now, for your dining and dancing pleasure, are the names. Frank and Lester, Ann and Marlboro, Jim from New Hampshire, Ken and his car, Lance from Dorchester, Chris from Peabody, who's 11 years old but listens to 70s tunes, Linda and Quincy, Dee Dee in West Virginia, Helene and Belmont, Nope, that's wrong. Helene in Belmont. Eddie from Attleboro. Tom in Fitchburg. Brian in Walpole. Ruth from Portland, Maine. David in Brookline. Mike in Pennsylvania. John from Cleveland. Dennis in Beverly. Joe from Cambridge. Matt in his car. Matt from Boston. And now on this one, it's at the end of side one. A Yardbirds question is asked, and we don't hear the answer. I believe Led Zeppelin would have been correct. Ladies and gents, side B. Buddy in Belmont, Terry from Weymouth, Kevin and Lynn, Beth in Michigan, Frank in Dorchester on a rotary phone, Mary from Worcester, Doug in Medford, Carl, Bob in Medford, Todd from Walpole, John in Arlington, Dieter from Maryland, John in his car, Gloria in Malden, Christian from Charlestown, Warren in Medford, Kevin from Foxborough, and Bill in Nashua, New Hampshire. If the swellness of the quiz wasn't enough, here's some other highlights. We break for a news update on the Unabomber. That's not included here. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame will be open Labor Day weekend. Our caller from Cleveland was not a fan of the building. We get the briefest snippet of a Jordan's Furniture commercial, and then we hear the end of Norm reading all about Powervites and Powermate. It's another classic with Norm advising, call the number and ask them, what it was I said. And in a funny turn of events, one of our callers asks Norm about the number. There's a lovely resort town in the Appalachian Mountains where they take great care of you with clean sheets and feeding you five times a day. A request for Linda Chase to do a swell music quiz theme. Norm gives us his impression of the guy with the muscles in his throat, Vaughn Monroe. Did you know that four certificates of award is equal to a PhD? And Norm reads a Vermont teddy bear commercial with full accompaniment by the Bunch of Hairy Guys. Episode 92, A.M. Gold, a swell music quiz from June 29th, 1995, is in the cassette deck, pressing play in three, two, and one. Nice to see you again, uh, Ed. Thanks a lot, Norm. I, I said thanks a lot, Norm. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you know, everybody at Riverside Apartments in Medford wants to say hi to you, and they're all listening right <laughs> you now. You did a diss track each other this past day, and we've done in the past uh, uh, the old-time radio quiz things down there, too. So I, I, I say hello to them. They're wonderful people and a credit to their race, and certainly to their genders, their ages, and their colors. There you go. Yeah, everything. Tony, good to, good to, well, good to see you. I've, I've seen Tony all this week, and I see Tony a lot. And uh, Tony Nesbitt, our producer here, will be uh, playing the, uh, the Swan I, Music. I say good stuff. to see you again. Okay, and, and also uh, Jack Hart is with us. Hi, Jack. Hey, good to be talking to you. Good to be talking to you. <laughs> oh, wow. 
What is that? Are you doing dialect now? Is that what that was? <laughs> oh, you know, it's you know, th th those are my roots. But you know, I mean, everybody else is you know, sort of being so chummy there. So I'd be you know, throwing my two cents. Okay, we have now. You know the categories that we have. Uh, we have a rock and roll. I'll just give you the categories, and then Ed, who is very clear-minded, will give you the rules of the whole thing. Uh, we have rock and roll, questions on rock and roll, questions from you, questions from us to you, uh, musical comedy, a lot of good questions on that. I hope you'll add some, some in that area. Uh, jazz, big band, and that's about it, isn't it? Because not only we have Daryl Gould, who did the rhythm and blues and the, the doo-wah doo kind of stuff. I think one time we tried a little bit of classical, but uh, none of us really are terribly familiar with that enough, no. enough to, to go into that. Well, I think we'll do uh, Bible songs. Bible songs would be good, too. Also, Yiddish freilux <laughs> would be nice. Anyway, tell the rules how, how we play this. There are three questions involved if you get all the way through. Right, Ed? That's right. It's uh, three questions. When you call up, please have a question ready for us. You have to stick with the category all the way through, and uh, we'll start you out with a question. You try and answer it. If you get it right, you get the privilege to ask us a question. Just the way I'm phrasing it. You know what I mean. But you, you can ask us a question. We'll try and knock it down. If we get it right, well, I'll try again next time. But if you get it wrong, we'll ask if you one we final question. If we, we get it wrong. If we get it wrong. <laughs> they have to get a correct answer, they have right? To get it right. Well, well they they the first been, one. You know, yeah. been, they, might, they might ask the wrong question to the answer that we give. We could look at it that oh, way. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There you go. But the second one... If if we get it wrong, they no, advance. Right. If we get it wrong, they advance. And then they get to, uh, we get to ask them one final question. And if they get it right, they've made it through the gauntlet. <laughs> okay. And, that, and, and, of course, the prizes are a little bit better than in the past because we not only give a certificate of award, which, again, is printed on very cheap paper yeah. <laughs> and with some misspellings and stuff. He said Mullen drew the whole thing up, and it's really kind of nice. And some, cur some circles from our coffee cups. No, no circles. No. <laughs> we don't need that kind of cheap talk. Just stop it, Chad. <laughs> and plus, in addition to the certificate of award, which it by itself is uh, suitable, as we say, suitable for framing and all that, and, and delightful to have. Mm -hmm. And some people have about four or five of them because they've called a lot and have beaten us very, Voice very mats. often. But we're also going to give away some peepers key rings to the winners <gasps> this time too. So this is this is kind of fun. That's the a little key ring with the picture of the. Little peepers, the spring peepers on the press it down. You hear the the sound of the, mm -hmm. you normally hear heralding spring in April. The the spring peeper sound. Talk about busting open the prize closet. Oh, this I is know. this is this is great stuff, man. This is <laughs> great stuff. spilling all over the floor. Okay, just one other note before we begin. Uh, I was thinking, uh, coming through the uh, the toll station, the toll booths on the Mystic, uh, the no, it's not the Mystic River anymore, the Tobin Bridge. Uh, I, I run into a lot of the same toll takers each night and each you know, because I come there so often. And I wanted to tell you just how pleasant they were and especially say hello to Joe Sant'Angelo, who may be falling out of the toll booth right now. He's Because he's, he's very, very pleasant. We have a little, as much conversation as you can have while the guy in back wants you to move along so he can get through too. But Joe is really nice. And the toll takers, they're really nice. Uh, sometimes you have complaints about them. You think they're not terribly polite on some of the the, uh, some of the toll roads, but uh, I, I I like them there anyway. And, and I just want to we, we we don't know what they've had to put up with before we got there. That's right. There might have been some guy who gave him a fifty dollar bill and yeah. said he wants it all back in dimes <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. You know, that's, I often wonder what would happen if, uh, like the the toll boots on the Tobin Bridge or even the the Mass Turnpike, what if they ran out of change? <laughs> Would they close everything or let people through for free while they ran to the bank? No, they, they drop a piece of paper and put it on the front window. We need quarters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will not take anything but uh, but change. Otherwise, you have to go all the way back to uh, you know to the Springfield. That's right. Okay, two five four ten thirty. Area code six one seven. Uh, every line is uh, lit. And if uh, the rules are still not that clear to you, just listen closely and you'll get the idea of how I'm, you know, I'm not no reflection on you guys because you explain them very well. Uh, but uh, just listen very closely and you, you'll get the idea of how we do it. Let's, let's throw one question on the table for starters like, like we did last time, okay. especially in uh, your, your category that you got the questions for. You got uh, musical comedy questions. And uh, jazz and, and jazz big band. also, right? Okay. And yeah. just remember, have, have a question, question ready. ready. That's right. Have a question because the if you if you get the initial answer 
the first question we ask you, uh, then you have to ask us a question. So be sure to have it. In the same category. That's right. All, all questions. Once you pick a category, you're going to stick with it right yep. through the end. Okay. Here's uh, Frank in the uh, town of Leicester. Oh, we didn't throw out the question. Oh, we didn't throw out the question. Uh, what, what is your question then? Uh, Hello there, Norm. Uh, hold on just a minute. Uh, I forgot. We're going to, we'll, we'll get to you in just a second, Frank. Yep. The, the question that Ed throws out is? is uh, this is uh, two out of, get two out of three. Get two out of three, and uh, I'll name three titles. Tell me the singer or the band. Fly Like an Eagle. Steve Miller. Fly. Well, hold on just a minute. No, don't, don't answer just yet. Fly Away and Fly Robin Fly. So if you can name two out of three, that's the first question. Okay, that's if you, pick, if, you, if you pick a rock. Right. If you pick musicals, here's the question we're going to throw out. Just hold on a minute, Frank. What musical was based on Charles Dickens' story about street kids in London? There was a big Broadway musical uh, based upon that. What was the name of it? And also we'll do some jazz stuff like uh, who is the drummer who leads the band on Colin O'Brien's late night TV show? Because I think he plays awfully well. I know he's associated very strongly with rock also, but he's a, to, to my mind, he's a great jazz drummer. Okay, now what category would you like, Frank? Um, rock and roll. Okay. Do you want to take the question that, that Ed threw out, or do you want to start with a new question? Well, give me a new question. Okay. Okay, I'll name uh, three titles and tell me two out of three singers are the bands that behind them calling dr love dr my eyes and doctor's orders oh. say the first one <laughs> calling dr love right. dr my eyes doctor's orders so you can name two out of three the singers or the groups Okay, start guessing because we we've, uh, we we only got about ten more seconds. You got me. Oh, okay. Thank you very Thank much you. for trying, Frank. Thanks. Okay, let's go to Ann in uh, Marlboro. Ann, what category would you like? Um, musical comedy. Musical comedy. Okay. Did you want the uh, the one I mentioned? The no. Charles. No. Okay, I'll give you another one then. Okay. Uh, what musical was based on the movie Anna and the King of Siam, and uh, who played the king? In the musical version, they made a musical version from Anna and the King of Siam. Incidentally, the king in the in the movie version was Rex Harrison. Who was in the movie version? What was the name of the movie, the musical? Well, and, and it's later, the King and I. That's correct. And who, the same fella played both the, on Broadway and also played in the movie. Oh, boy. Who, who was that? Uh, he was throwing a smoke five packs of cigarettes. That's right. He he made it. That's right. He made a commercial for the American Cancer Society, saying, "Don't smoke." Yeah. yeah. Don't smoke, oh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's uh, right. Yeah. Remember that is the bald guy. Mm -hmm. Kind of set the pace for bald guys. Yeah. I feel I pretty good. I know this one. Name. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A very well known person. I'm sorry you didn't get that, Dan. But thank you very much for trying. Okay, let's go to uh, Jim in New Hampshire. Hi, Jim. What category would you like? Okay, rock and roll. Okay, and incidentally, any questions that are left unanswered, you can you can start I'm out with. Throw it out right now. One is Kiss, and the other one is Jackson Brown. That's right. Calling Doctor Love is Kiss. That's right. Doc, thank you, Doctor Doctor My Eyes, Jackson Brown. Brown. And the last one is Doctor's Orders, and that was Carol Douglas. Okay. What's your question for us? Uh, this <coughs> actually. It's uh, from a two local bands, a uh, local singer and a local band, uh, back in the 50s and then in the 80s. Uh, they both did the same song and they both uh, made it uh, very famous. And uh, the uh, one of them was on a movie and the first person was uh, Freddie Boom Boom Cannon and I want you to name the other band that made the song famous. Is that specific enough for you guys, do you think? That's kind of a vague question, is it? You um, yeah, it, it actually, you, you, you tried, you used a lot of words, but you weren't that specific. Um, a, a local band, so we're looking for the, the local band. A local band who made it famous and a local singer who, back in the uh, doo period, had the same uh, song that was uh, very popular. Uh, when the local band made it, it made it onto a uh, movie. They did the song on a movie, and uh, uh, the, the song was Palisades Park. 
Oh, I, I was going to say, pal. I really was. And I was going to. I remember the Stompers was one band that did it. Yeah, you got it then. Because it was Freddie Boom Boom Ken who did one, and then it was the Stompers who did the other. Tony. Okay. I was going to say that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Son of a gun, you He's got that. He's from Somerville, I think. Uh, Freddie Cannon. Here's Ken, uh, Ken, who's in his car. Hi, Ken. You're on WBZ. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I'd like to do uh, Big Band. Big Band. Big so, Band. Oh, uh, my goodness. Uh, I'm just stunned him. I'm just so excited. Okay, the uh, popular band uh, that was featured in the 1942 movie Orchestra Wives... Orchestra Wives, that was a, a very, very popular band, whose theme song, I still cry when I hear it, just brings back all kinds of memories. And the uh, orchestra leader, I'll, I'll keep giving you a clue till you get it. Was John Lombardo. No, no, was it, no, just, I never, no, a tr he was a trombone player. I'll give you one more shot. Oh. Uh, well, trombone. Uh, I never knew what, what instrument uh, Guy Lombardo played. Did he ever play? He played, he played the clarinet. Guy Lombardo did? Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, so I'll see the other guy. Very bad. Orchestra, orchestra, orchestra Wives, 1942. Big, big time, oh. big time band. Well, yeah. of course, Guy Lombardo is a big time band. Oh. Who do you think? Uh, boy, I don't know. I, I, I can't get it. I'm sorry. Okay, hang in. And, and anybody else who knows the answer can start out if you're going to pick the big band category to, to ask that question. Okay, here's Lance in Dorchester. Hi, Lance, you're on WBZ. Hello. With the Swell Music Quiz. What category would you like? Uh, what are the categories? The categories are uh, rock and roll, big band, jazz, and musical comedy. Uh, rock, rock and roll from the 80s and up. Okay, all the questions tonight from rock and roll since the 70s is kind of trendy right now. All the questions are going to be from the 70s. Okay. Heaven, heaven, I'm going to name three songs. I'm going to name three songs. Here is the uh, three titles. If you can name two out of three, you'll be all set. Heaven Must Be Missing an Angel, Angel in Your Arms, and Undercover Angel. Um, undercover Angel, Andy Gift? No, no. Oh, um, uh, I give up. Oh, I'm sorry, lads. Thank you for trying. Boy, we, we, uh, we, we're not giving you any uh, uh, peepers. Uh, uh, rings away at all. Uh, let's go to Chris in uh, Peabody. Hi, Chris. What category would you like? Rock. Rock. Another rock question. Okay. Okay. Did you hear any questions that were on the board so far? Um, no. Okay. I'll name three titles, and can you tell me two out of three? Could you keep the singer the, uh, of the band? Could you? Because I, I think according to the, the, the way rock uh, Chris sounds, I wouldn't go back any further than two weeks. Are you very? You're very young, aren't you, Chris? Yeah, I'm eleven, but I. I've listened to like 70, okay. 70s and stuff. Okay, good, the 70s good. And 80s and everything. good. I'm being uh, condescending and I'm not being fair to you. So here's Ed with a question. Okay, the, uh, the three titles are We're an American Band, Band on the Run, and Band of Gold. Oh, man. Just name two out of three. I can't. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. Thanks very much. But I appreci I, um, appreciate you calling. Can I say one thing? Sure. Um, on the first, the first question of this um, game, I knew the first question that was calling Doctor Love was by Kiss. Is that right? You're a good man. You got that right. Yeah, someone else did too, and I'm I'm glad you got that one right. All right. You're okay, Chris, and I I want to be like you when I grow up. Anyway, sound like a cute kid. Uh, Linda in Quincy, you're on WBZ playing the Swan Music Quiz. Hi, how are you? Good. What quick category would you like? Uh, musical comedy. Musical comedy, okay. We had one question on the board there. What musical was based on Charles Dickens' story about street kids in London? If you want to guess that, that's okay. If not, I'll give you another one. Okay. Oh, the other one also was uh, who played in, uh, uh, King and I? in The King and I? Yeah, who was the, the, the male starring lead? Yul Brenner. <laughs> Brenner is correct. Now, do you have a musical comedy question for us? Yeah, it's another King and I question. Pardon me? Another King and I question? Any question you have. No, you. the King and I. You No, no, you no, no, just as long as it's in musical comedy. It doesn't have to be unless you want it to yeah, be. Yeah, I do want it to be. Well, okay, go ahead. Okay, um, there's a remake of the King and I album soundtrack. Yeah. Can you tell me who the two singers are? I have no idea who that would be. They're, they're, they're just, you mean some some recording company is putting out the score of King and I and they're using uh, some other people other than right. uh, other than Yul Brynner? Uh -huh. 
No, I uh, was. That, is that something new? Uh, well, pardon me. Didn't they used to have the K-Tel singers used to redo uh, yeah. all the all the songs? Yeah, this is kind of a cover album. This isn't exactly musical comedy. Of well, well I don't know. I'll, I'll, is, is it like a reissue? Did they do the play again with new people? With new people. Okay, so that it's like a new a revival. A revival. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Work for everything. I give I give up. I have no idea who that would be. That this is news to me. Okay, it was a revival of the album, and it was Julie Andrews and Ben Kingsley. Hmm. Oh really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a good question. That sounds familiar. Yeah, Ben Kingsley, I think, would be great in that, and Julie Andrews, of course, would yeah. be also. Uh -huh. Good he's, question. Now, he's got the hair it, for it anyway. Yeah. Now, well, is is that going to open in theaters and all that too? No, no. It was just they just remade the album. Just for the album, because that sounds like they'd they'd attract some yeah, attention in the theaters. Yeah. Okay, okay, good for you. Now, I'll give you one more. Uh, what musical features the characters Nathan Detroit and Sky Masterson? Guys and Dolls. Guys and Dolls is correct. We have a winner. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do have a winner. Hang in there, and we'll uh, get the information uh, from from you, and uh, we'll get the stuff out to you. Get a, you get a wonderful certificate of award that <laughs> you'll just treasure. Thank you so much. If you like uh, uh, certificates on cheap paper and stuff, and also a, a, a key ring. Okay, let's go to uh, Dee Dee in West Virginia. Hi, Dee Dee. You're on WBZ. Hi, Norm. Hi, guys. Hi, Hello. guys. Hi, hi, hi there. Hi there, but Dee Dee. Just fine. <laughs> uh, what would you? What would? What category would you like? Rock and roll, but a new one. Okay. okay. You mean a different question? Okay. Uh -huh. Tonight, all of my questions will be uh, with the '70s. Uh, you can ask me anything about rock, but uh, ask us anything about rock. But my questions will come out as '70s questions. I'll name three titles, and can you tell me two out of three? Of the singers or the band, Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, Blue Money, and Jackie Blue. Can you name two out of three of the singers of the bands? Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain was Willie Nelson. That's right. Uh, oh God! I know Jackie Blue as well. I can't. I can't think. I'm sorry. Can't think of it. Uh -oh. oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, D.D. That's okay. And calling all the way from West Virginia would have, would have liked to have sent you something. Oh, I know. It's okay. <laughs> try, try, us, uh, try us again. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye, D.D. Uh, we have a CBS News break coming up at 1231 in about two minutes. Is that some new new development or something happening? Oh, the Unabomber. The, the, uh, anyway, we'll talk about right. that just a minute. Let's take a break and then Mullen and uh, Tony Nesbitt, and, of course, the very lovely Jack Hart. Hi. Hi. Okay, let's go to El Elaine. Uh, Elaine. Oh, my friend Helene in Belmont. I bet I know the category you would like. Yes, you do. One okay. of these days, Helene, you got to call up and say rock and roll. And really, <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of wild, yeah. All right. When, finally, when the room I have filling up with your certificate. <laughs> I know that. Oh, you I'll ask the rock. Uh, okay, you want? I, I assume you want musicals. Is yes, that correct? Yes, I do. We had one one uh, question that was out. That was the musical based I'll on. I'll take that one. Okay, the uh, based on uh, Charles Dickens' story about street kids in London. And what was the name of that musical? That was Oliver. That was Oliver. That is correct. Based on Oliver Twist. That yes, yes, it was. As a matter of fact, and that's exactly the musical I thought of as I wrote it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, give us a question now. All right, what was the show? And the composer lyricist for the sweetest sounds I ever heard. Uh, Rogers and Hammerstein. You're half right. Well, no, isn't that you're talking about the Sound of Music? No. The sweetest sounds I ever heard. Mm -hmm. I'll the, even give you the first four lines. No, no. What the question is? Of the lyric, it might help. Well, no. The question is though, who wrote that song? No. What was the show? And it was not the Sound of Music. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. Let, let me give you the first four lines. Okay. okay. The sweetest sounds I ever heard are still inside my head. The sweetest words I ever knew are waiting to be said. And it was not uh, Rogers and Hammerstein. It was not. It was not the sound of music. It was not sound of music. It was Rogers and Hammerstein. No, it was the... not entirely. Partly. I'm giving you hints like mad. You've I already know. lost, Norm. Yeah, and I did lose. I give fighting, up. but Rogers and Hart? No, it wasn't even Rogers and Hart. It was Rogers who wrote the lyrics himself, the only show in which he did, and the show was No Strings. Oh, No Strings, yes, I remember that. That's right. And uh, it was music and lyrics by Richard Rogers. Hmm. 
Hey, that's right. You're a very good question. Unfortunately, I didn't hear the man you had on Larry Hart. I would like to, but it was a little late. Yeah, he was on like 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You, find, you find that late? I, or some people found it very early. Frederick, they had been Frederick Nolan. Yeah, Frederick Nolan out of, uh, he was, uh, he was uh, we talked to him, he was in London at that time. Mm -hmm. Hey, you win again. Well, well, no, you, no, you have to ask oh, oh, that's Oh, that's right. He loves you so much, he's just ready to give you a keychain. Yeah, I'll get, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you one, one question then here. Um, okay, the musical that featured Richard Burton, Robert Goulet, Julie Andrews, and I saw the show, it uh, played Boston before it opened in New York. Camelot. Camelot. The Camelot is absolutely correct. That we sort of just run, we just sort of run through the paces with you. We know that you're going to get it anyway. I was looking for the most difficult question I could find, and, and, and we don't have anything that would have stopped you. Okay, here's Mike Epstein, and you've got another thing to, 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 to give to the recycling well, center. I'm partly through papering the room. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you. Let's go to Eddie in uh, Attleboro. Hi, Eddie. Good morning, Norm. Good morning. What what uh, category would you like? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Okay, we have a couple of questions still up on the board. Have you heard any of those? Yes, I have, and I would like to answer the one with the band there. Okay, good. The band question. We're an American band. Okay, that's Grand Funk Railroad. Right, band on the run. Paul McCartney and Wings. And band of gold. Band of gold. Um, you already, you already won. won. But... Two out of three. It's Sorry, that was a tough one for me. I that, couldn't even think of that one. That was Free to Pain. Okay. Excellent. And. Um, is Frida Pan is considered a rock vocalist? Because, yeah, I always thought of her as a maybe more jazzy kind of oriented, but anyway, you kind know of a better. a rock song. That, the, the, the song itself was kind of like a rock and roll song. Yeah. Okay, because she's a fine vocalist. I've always liked her. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, no, I didn't know any other songs besides that one, but that was, a, that was a big hit. One of her only big hits, I think. Do you have a question for us? Yes, I do. Okay, it's uh, in late 1975... The Eagles had a falling out with a band member. In 1976, Joe Walsh had replaced them. Can you name the band member that the Eagles had the falling out with? Hmm. Uh, let's, let's see. Uh, Jack, um, oh. was, was Randy Meisner? Um, yes, he was, was but he, he wasn't one of the band member that they had the falling out with, though. Yeah. Hmm. He was one of the four, one of the original, the original four. A wonder, great question. I yeah. can't remember. Uh, J.D. Southern? <laughs> okay, well, no, he was a writer, though. Okay. What is the answer to that? Okay, the answer is Bernie Ledden. Oh, Does that sound familiar to you guys? Bernie Ledden? Is that his name? Yeah, yeah no, I wouldn't have gotten that. No, I no. Excellent. Yeah. yeah, the original four members were Glenn Fry, Don Henley, Randy Meisner, and Bernie Ledden. Bernie Ledden, you probably might remember him as a flying burrito brother. Hmm. Okay, you have one final question that uh, the, the guys here will ask of you. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> question is, um, I'll name three. If you can name two out of three, you win. Okay. Why can't we be friends? Thank you for being a friend, and hello, old friend. Okay, hello, old friend. That's Eric Clapton. Right. Thank you for being my friend. Wow. Thank you. I for... know that one, too. I just can't think of it. Thank you for being a friend, right? The Golden Girls used it as a theme song. Sounds like Mr. Rogers, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you for being my friend. That's fine. Wow. It's you a girl can... group, but I just can't think of the name. I yeah, know man. it, too. I got on the tip of my tongue. I can't and what about it. Why Can't We Be Friends? Why Can't We Be Friends? Why Can't We Be Friends? You know that one? Wow. I can't get that either. Great great soul band. Um, uh, uh, you got me. Uh, Oh, I'm I'm sorry. You came awfully close. That's a shame, Eddie. I uh, hope you'll try again because we're going to be doing this again. What August uh, something? Oh, yeah, August eighteenth. Mm -hmm. August eighteenth. Do you want to mark that in your calendar, Ed? Okay. Okay. Go the night of the seventeenth into the morning of the eighteenth. However, you want to look at it. Okay, that's good. Tom and Fitchburg. Hi, Tom. What category would you like? I'll do the big bands. Big bands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to try that one? The nineteen forty-two movie, orchestra wise, the band that was in that, or shall I give you another one? The movie came out in 42, or... What's that, please? Did the movie come out in 42? Yes. Mm. Yes, and it had one of the uh, most popular bands in the business as uh, featured in, in that, Orchestra Wives. And the leader was a uh, trombone player. trombone player, that's correct. I can think of a couple, but... 
Well, no, I played the trumpet. Yes, yes. I won't even... Uh, you, you, that, that didn't seem to be a guess, but it was close enough for me. The first name you said. Yeah. Glenn Miller is... It was the Glenn Miller Orchestra that was in the movie. That's correct. You want to hit me with one or hit, hit, hit us all with a question about big bands? Yeah. Um, there was a famous big band person called Duke and somebody else called Count. Uh, name someone who was called King. Uh, Benny Goodman, I was sort of the sort of the king of. Uh, well, he was the king of something. But, but there was another one. King. But there was another Wayne King. You mean? No, no, not the name. Oh, but the this was name. a title they gave to somebody. Yeah. A king. Uh, oh, I was I, that. Is that I can a, think of one? Well, who's that? I can, I'm thinking of the King of Heidi Ho. Well, no, that uh, we're, we're talking about somebody whose nickname was like Count oh. Basie or Duke yeah. Ellington, but it was oh, King King Oliver. You got it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of him as a big band uh, leader that because he no, was, was an early jazz. Yeah, early jazz player. trumpet player and he yeah. was an inspiration for Duke for uh, for uh, uh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, that's right. Okay, hey, that's a good question. Though. Thank you very much, Tom. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let's go to uh, Brian in Walpole. Brian, what is your category? Um is that is the first question that the show opened up with still on the board? Yeah, it still is. Okay. Um, right? Yeah, refresh my memory. Fly like an eagle. Okay. Uh, that uh, Steve Miller band. Fly away. Uh, Elton John. Mm. No, but oh, you still have a chance, I guess. Great. But fly, Robin, fly. Oh, oh, guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> fly away, Elton John's in. Fly away, Elton John. Doesn't ring a bell for me at all. Yeah, or oh, I'm thinking of someone saved my life tonight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was a great song. You know, that song, that single, happened to be um, over six minutes long. It was six minutes, 40 seconds, an extremely long single. He was famous yeah. for really long singles, busting out of the three-minute, three-and-a-half-minute yeah. range. And they released it like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fully. One, of, one of the few that they did. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We ruled the charts of that. So time. how are we doing? The status is is is. Uh, is uh, we got you on that one. Oh, yep. oh, Brian! Brian just missed on that. I'm Good sorry, time. Brian, but okay. thanks a lot for All the right, call. Thank you. And uh, you know our phone number is two five four ten thirty two five four ten thirty, area code six one seven. We go to Ruth up in Portland, Maine. Hi, Ruth. Hi. What category would you like? Well, I was going to answer that Ben Miller, but I'll try big bands. Big bands. Okay, we'll give you big bands. The uh, lead, a band leader whose theme song was Cherokee, and as a result of the success of that, uh, uh, one of the Indian tribes sort of made him an honorary Indian. After that, he did a whole lot of uh, songs with Indian titles in it. Mm. And uh, he was known as the White Duke Ellington because he loved Duke Ellington, and he a lot of his sounds were very similar to uh, the Duke Ellington band. Charlie Barnett. Charlie Barnett is absolutely correct. Very good. Thank you. Okay, you want to give me a question now, if you would, please? Uh, do you know who the arrangement, uh, the arranger of, of Stan Kenton's City of Glass was? That's a very good question. I love that album, too. I used to play that a lot. City of Glass? And the City of Glass was the name of an album. That was the whole album. It had a lot of different songs in it. Mm -hmm. A few of them I, I just love. Pretty powerful things. Um, no, I, I cannot. Oh, it's I, Bob Rettinger. Okay, I would never have guessed that. I would have never. Oh, guessed. I had to find a tough one because I know. <laughs> no, you, you, you did find a tough one. That was that was really very very good. We'll take this one then. And, and you're and you're very you're very you're a very hip person. There. Well, That's very good. You. Okay, uh, how about this? Uh, the uh, featured instrument. Uh, this is you're gonna find this easy because you're a hip lady. The featured instrument of band leaders Ray McKinley. Uh, Louis Belson and Chick Webb. Drums. Drums is absolutely correct. And you have won uh, some really swell stuff, including the uh, Peeper's Key Ring and, of course, the Certificate of Award, which I know you want to show your friends and probably brag about. Yes, I'll cherish it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, thanks a lot, Ruth. Thank you. Okay, let's go to uh, David in uh, Brookline. David, you're on WBC. Yes, hello, Norm. Hi, hi, David. What category would you like? Uh, rock and roll. Okay. Okay, I have three... Uh, Three titles for you from the seventies. Um, if you can, can I go me. for one of the ones you already did, or go yeah. ahead. Yeah, what which, which uh, category was it? Which uh, the one with Jackie Blue? Right, it was uh, Jackie Blue, mm -hmm. Blue Monday, and Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. Can you name two out of three? Oh, okay, it was Blue Monday, right? Um, blue, blue Money. Blue Blue what? Money. 
Yeah, Blue Money. Okay. Um, Van Morrison. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jackie Blue, Ozark Mountain, Daredevil. Right, wow. very good. Wow, that sounded yeah, so good. Someone already said Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. Did you hear that one? I didn't, you know, I heard it, but I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Nelson. Okay. Okay, do you, have, do you have a question for us, please? You know, th- I was trying to think of one, and I really couldn't think of a good one. But here's one anyway. <laughs> um, there's a song uh, in the 70s, Lonesome Loser. Who sang it? Little River Band. Oh, that was too easy. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, David. Hey, it was next, great talking to you. Not great talking to you. Come up with a tougher one next time, if you'd like. Okay, David. Got a whole you. month now to uh, plan yeah, ahead. That's right. Six, just sit down, start right now, and do your homework. 617 254 1030. And uh, we go to Mike in Pennsylvania. Hi, nice to hear from you, Mike. Hey, how's it going? It's going so far. I hope I was kind of hoping you'd tell us it was going swell. Oh, it's nice down here in central Pennsylvania. Where what town are you in? Uh, Northumberland, about 30 miles from Williamsport. Oh, yeah. yeah. The uh, home of the Little League. Right. Okay, what category would you like? Uh, I'll take rock. Okay. Okay, again, songs from the 70s. I'll name three. If you can name two out of three, then you'll be all set. Okay. Blame it on the boogie. Boogie nights. Boogie on reggae woman. That would be the boogie question, by the way. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I seem to sense the word there. I seem to tie that all together. Uh-huh. I didn't know whether I didn't want to Gee. jump ahead too fast. How about Dawn of Summers? No. The second one? No, no. Boogie Nights, no. It was not Dawn of Summer on that one. Well, try one more. I still got a chance for the two out of three. Uh, boogie on Reggae Woman. Get a Reggae Woman, Boogie. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, Mike, thank you very much for trying. I like when they apologize. <laughs> we have a call from Cleveland. John uh, is in Cleveland. Hi, John. Are you right in the city of Cleveland? Hi, Norm. Yes, I am. Oh, hey, well, that's nice. The Rock and nice. Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's right. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland. Is that open already? No, it's going to open Labor Day. Okay, so this is it. Finally is it because they've been talking about this for a lot of oh. a lot of winters. <laughs> it took a long time to raise that money. Yeah, I guess so. Have you seen the uh, construction of the building so far? Uh, yes, I, I drove by a couple times. It's, you know, it's pretty awful. Is it pretty awful? What, what it's, it? it's a nice, it's, uh, for rock and roll, it's all right. We had it looks the... like a, a glass waffle iron tipped. <laughs> what is it, kind of a little too modern for you, man? Yeah, really modern. Yeah. Glass we had them on, uh, about a year and a half ago. Yeah, that's right. And I was supposed to it. open almost momentarily at that time. And I finally, they're finally going to be opening. Is it fairly definite that it'll be opening oh, this yeah, fall? Oh, yeah. They've already got the, the opening acts for the... Yeah, there's a... There's a rock concert. That at day. Cleveland Stadium? Right. Tickets went on sale, I think. Oh, well, they're on sale Last now. week. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, Melissa Etheridge. Uh, okay. Stray Cats, I think. No, just... Yeah. Is, it gonna, uh, is there a performance... Afternoon, huh? Yeah, is there a performance area inside the museum itself? Uh, that I don't know. They've they've got so much stuff that they've been handing out news bulletins and flyers. They as they they're trying to finish it, but I think there is. There's a lot all multimedia in there and things like that. Yeah. Okay. What uh, I assume the category it will be rock or maybe it won't be. No, big band. Oh, big band. Okay. <laughs> that, you kind of threw me off with that one there. Okay. Um, Let's see. The uh, you gave us such information. I don't want to give you anything too difficult, but then again, there's probably nothing that's too difficult for you. You old softy. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay, a pianist with Horace Heights Band formed his own band in 1944, and his theme song was "Sunrise Serenade." Then, as the, the the guy who started out as a pianist with Horace Height and his musical nights uh, formed his own band, he had a daughter named Marjorie Hughes who had one fairly successful song with his band called Oh What It Seemed to Be. It was like a ride on a train. That's uh, all that it was, but oh, what it seemed to be. Frankie Carl? Frankie Carl, absolutely. Very good. Wow. Very oh, good. Wow. Okay, what, what question do you have for us? Well, it's pretty bizarre. <laughs> so we're a pretty bizarre group. What famous band singer choked to death on a peanut butter sandwich at the Brown Derby in the early 60s. Wow. Well, I can think I was the mama from the mamas and the papas joke, but that wasn't the one. sandwich in but, <laughs> but, but this is a big band leader? Yeah, no, he, he had his own band, but he was more as a singer, novelty singer. 
and he choked on a peanut butter sandwich in the 60s. Right. A novelty singer. That could be a good Well, idea. you talk about peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. Yeah. It's stuck well, to, the, to his glottal there or something. The roof, sure, of, his his ribs, the roof of his uh, esophagus. Yeah. Stuck to his ribs, his lungs. Yeah. The bronchi- I, I'm, no, I have no idea. Who would that be? Spike Jones. Uh, it was Skinny Ennis. Oh, really? Right. Oh. Oh, Skinny Ennis, Skinny Ennis was with uh, Hal Kemp's band. See, this is all new to you guys. And then he went to and the then he for- Hope Show. Yeah, and that's right. And he formed his own band, which sounded very much like Hal Kemp, that staccato style. And he very, had a very breathy kind of st- sound. Was he still skinny from eating all that peanut yeah. butter? <laughs> no, yeah. But he had a, no, Skinny was spelled S-K-I-N-N-A-Y. It wasn't, right. it wasn't the description oh. of his physique. And his theme song was... Got a date with an angel. That's right. Got to meet her at seven. He sang like that. I knew all that stuff except the guy's name. <laughs> okay, so I'll ask you one more question for the uh, for the certificate, okay? All right. Okay, the theme song, who used as the theme song, the song Starburst? I knew you were going to ask that. I don't know how. Wow. How would you know that? Did you Gene look Krupa? Up? Gene Krupa's right. That's right. He, Absol- had, absolutely he had two right. theme songs. What was the other one? Was it, uh, oh, drum... It was either Drum and Man or Drum Boogie. Well, he had a song called Drum Boogie. I, I didn't know that that was his theme, but he did play that a lot. That's true. Yeah. But uh, Starburst was his uh, was kind of kind of his his actual theme. But you guessed that, so you went a Peepers Key Ring. Are you familiar with our Peepers oh, Key Ring? Oh, I love that Peepers Key Ring. <laughs> okay, well you got one, and they also got a got a certificate I've of award. I got a award. cicada key ring. <laughs> okay. It drives a parrot crazy. <laughs> okay. Hey, you're fun, and thanks a lot, John. Thanks, Norm. Okay, bye bye. And uh, he's we're taking his name and address. That's that's kind of interesting. And he had all that information about about the rock and roll hall of fame out in Cleveland. Okay, be back in a bit. We think you'll agree that one of our <laughs> split up the side. You should see, and... he, you should see her B12. <laughs> <laughs> Power made is uh, an antioxidant formula. I wanted to get that, and that's important. And one that includes only the finest herbs available, like uh, echinacea. Oh, echinacea, you know. Throw that a little bit of that on my elbow. You yeah, know, you're thinking of, probably you're thinking of that resort town up in the Appalachians. We go there each summer. Oh, echinacea. I think that's where I got the yeah. stuff on my elbow. Clean sheets and they feed you five times a day. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> they leave the light on for you. And you see a comedian during dinner. Yeah. Tell everyone. <laughs> Can I forget the rest of this? We must have lost this sponsor anyway by now. Uh, tell everyone that they can look and feel their best by taking Power Vites and Power Mate together every day. They're available at Health March, Chartwell, Bemis, Braddock, and Freedom Pharmacies, and Strand in Dorchester, hmm. Andrews in Wellesley, Duval's in Whitman, and Howe's Pharmacy. Just uh, tell your favorite pharmacy or health food store manager to get them for you. Or to order by them. phone, and that's and that's and that's power power what and his and his little sister power vites and the little sister power mate. So his power mate is actually his little sister. Yes, I see. Mm. Call oh, if you if you there. if you paid attention in my medical class, you would have known that <laughs> you stupid pook. <laughs> to order by phone, call one eight hundred five one eight five two five two. The best thing would be would be to call them and, and try to figure out what it is. Ask them what it was. I said. Just don't tell them you heard it here. And yeah, but please, for God's sake, tell them tell them Bob Rawley told you. You heard it from Bob Rawley. Uh, try one eight hundred five one eight five two five two. Our Ed Mullen. Getting by. Ed Mullen Stand, is sta- standing by, standing by, standing by and uh, uh, old Tony Nesbitt. The vacationing, uh, Nesbitt. To- the vacationing Tony Nesbitt. <laughs> the vacationing Tony Nesbitt, that's right. And, of course, Jack Hart is uh, with us. Hello, Jack, Hello, again. And I'm sitting around. And you're sitting around, and that sounds like the punchline of some joke. This woman was so fat that when she sat around, I mean, she really sat around. Sat around that's the joke. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she sat around the house. She <laughs> sat around the house. <laughs> Okay. Hey, how come Linda Chase doesn't have a snappy little tune play the swell? I was swell thinking of that. We'll, we'll we'll have to ask her to do a do a theme song quiz. for the swell music quiz. Maybe she's listening now. I, I don't. Know. If she is, maybe she'll. Maybe she's thinking of one now. It's the swell, 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 swell music, music quiz, quiz, something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack, I think we should make up one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, everybody in three. It, it, two, I, I, hold, 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 hold on, kids. <laughs> you don't mind. I'd rather have it. I'd rather have Linda do that. Just to hold it to yourself. Mike Epstein is our producer, and uh, <laughs> my goodness. Okay, let's uh, let's start get, getting some calls now, or answering some calls. Dennis and Beverly. Hi, Dennis. How you doing? 
Good, thank you. What category would you like? Uh, big band. Oh, big band. Son of a gun, we're getting, we're getting a lot of big band stuff, yeah. and I'm really excited. Yep. How about this one? Here's the, the drummer. This is not a big band, but it's a good-sized band, and this drummer, who who's probably noted more for rock in the past, but I think is a great jazz drummer, too, uh, leads the band on the Colin O'Brien late-night TV show. I shouldn't even mention that, because he's probably on... Is he on the air now? 11, 12, 12, 3? Uh, yeah, no, no, he's the, off now. No, no, no. Uh, no, he's on till one thirty or so. No, he'd yeah. be on right. He'd be on right now. Sure. Who is the drummer? Really a fine drummer. I yeah. love watching him. Do you know who I'm talking about? Max Weinberg. Max Weinberg. That's that's right. Good. Now you have a question for me. I yes, bet. Yes, I do. Who wrote the lyrics to "On the Sunny Side of the Street"? Oh, let's say grab your coat, get your cat hat, leave your worries, leave them on the doorstep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That was a big Tommy Dorsey thing with the with that uh, the, the chorus. Uh, forget what was the name of the group that sang that. Uh... Ink spots. No, it was a sister group, of women. Hmm. Uh, I I I'm not sure who wrote the lyrics to that. McGuire I mean, sisters. No, not the McGuire sisters. No, this is what before them. <laughs> uh, How could you wait? Jeez. I know. Kind of, they, 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 for a while, Tommy Dorsey had a, a group called the Sentimentalists, but it wasn't that the Fontaine Sisters or something. I give up anyway. I don't know tennis. It was Dorothy Fields. Oh, Dorothy Fields. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. We were talking about her the other day. We had the author of uh, Laurent, the book on mm -hmm. Lorenz Hart, Frederick Nolan out of London. And uh, there was a team of Weber and Fields uh, for which the Sunshine Boys, the Neil Simon play, was based upon Weber and Fields, uh, uh, Lou, Lou Fields, I think was, Herb Fields, I forget. Uh, anyway, and then he had Dorothy Fields was his daughter, and he had a number of other Fields who were, who were in the music business. I'm telling you more, you don't even care about any of this, do you? <laughs> okay. Anyway, you got me on that, so let me ask you another uh, question. Uh, let's see. Okay, okay. Tisket a Tasket, important song for Ella Fitzgerald, and she sang it when she was a very young, skinny kid with what band? Tisket a task, the first band she sang with, and they sang at the Apollo in uh, in uh, New York, and she established a name at that point and was all on the upbeat from that point on. Uh, the the uh, orchestra leader was a little stooped over kind of guy who had some physical problems, played the drums. And I'll give you about five more seconds. Um. Uh. Oh, I'm, no so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That It does go back a bit. But uh, thank you very much, Dennis. All I right. appreciate the call. Okay, let's go to Joe in the Cambridge. Joe, you're on WBZ playing the Swell Music Quiz. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're all just fine. Thank you. Rock and roll, please, and the existing boogie question. <laughs> the existing boogie question remains on the table that you're going to go for. The three, if you can name two out of three, you win. Here's the three titles. Blame it on the boogie. Boogie Nights, Boogie on Reggae Woman. Boogie on Reggae Woman, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder's correct. Boogie Nights Heat Wave. Boogie Nights Heat Wave is correct. Mm -hmm. Blame it on the Boogie Jackson 5. Very good. The Jackson's correct. Wow. Excellent. Do you have a question for us, please? Yes. The popular song, That's What Friends Are For, right. was recorded by Dionne Warwick, Gladys Knight, Elton John, and Stevie Wonder. It's originally recorded by a rock and roll singer for a movie soundtrack. I know. Name one or the other. Go ahead, Jack. It was uh, Rod Stewart for uh, Night Shift, I Very believe. Very good. Wow. Way to go. Dang. Excellent. Hey, thanks Thanks for calling, hey, thanks, Joe. guys. Take care, now. Thanks Jack. for calling. Yeah. How, why and how did you know that one? Oh, it's a great movie. The movie oh, yes, it Henry is. Henry Winkler and uh, Michael that, Keaton. And I remember, uh, and Michael Keaton, and I remember at the end, all through the movie, you hear little strains of it. And, and I had seen it on videotape after the Dionne Warwick thing. That's right. And you, you're hearing these little strains of music. And then at the end, you, in the Rod Stewart version, it doesn't strike you as it's that same song. But then I said, hey, that's that song. Now, and at the end, it's... That's it. It's just on the album. He doesn't have that on any, any of his albums. It's just like on the soundtrack of the movie. Right? Right. I believe you're right. Okay, let's go to Matt, who's in his car. Matt, hi, you're on WBZ. How you doing, Norm? Good, thank you. What category would you like? 
Uh, I guess uh, rock and roll, if I could have the earliest part of the 70s, that would be great. Okay, well, it's not split up that way, so you just got to take what you can get. Oh, okay. don't be, don't be, don't scold, don't scold. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess tonight you're going to get 1979. <laughs> <laughs> In December. <laughs> oh. No, I, it's, it's just very random, and not, uh, so here's the uh, question for you. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Money, honey. For the love of money, money, if you can name two out of three of the groups, money, honey, for the love of money, money, in the 70s. Okay. Um, I know John Lennon did a, a, a remake of money uh, sometimes in the 70s on the rock and roll album. Mm. Uh yeah, I'm. We're going to stay mostly with the hits. I'm not. I'm not going to go with. I'm not trying to to completely stump you. That there once was a song. These are you know these are real uh, legitimate hits. Okay, I'm doomed. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm so sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you for trying, man. It's good of you to call. Thanks, Norm. Okay, bye bye. I'm doomed. <laughs> that sounds so awful. <laughs> Incidentally, the categories are rock and roll, big band. Uh, musical comedy, also jazz. If there's any, any individual jazz kinds of things you want to talk about, that's okay too. Six one seven two five four ten thirty. Matt in Boston, you're on WBZ. Hi, Matt. Hi, how you doing? Good. What category would you like to pick? Um, I'll go with rock and roll. Okay. Okay, rock and roll. Heaven knows. I'll yep. name. If you can name two out of three, you're all set. Okay. From the seventies. Heaven knows. Heaven knows. Heaven must be missing an angel. Okay. In heaven on the seventh floor. Oh, heaven on the seventh floor. Uh, hmm. I'm stumped on all three. Uh, oh, oh. Someone's not stumped. Oh. Someone well, yell it out in the background. I can hear them. Well, I got, I got, well, I'm stumped on those, but I got one I can ask you. Well, ask us anyway, even though you're stumped. All right. I'm stumped on those three. Uh, I was going to ask you, early, um, late 60s and early 70s uh, British rock group, the uh, Yardbirds, it was a two-parter. It was um, named two uh, solo, very successful solo, gar guitar solo guitarists uh -huh. who left the group. And what uh, uh, multi-platinum uh, rock and roll group during the 70s did the Yardbirds and um, rename themselves. Oh, well, Jimmy Page and Eric Clapton on the guitarists. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, no, I was thinking two soloists. Two people who actually left the group and went on to be soloists. Oh, Jeff so. Beck Jeff. and uh, Eric Clapton. All right, yep. Okay. And they went on to Derek and the Dominoes? Uh, yep. And the name of what the Yardbirds... After they... Oh, yeah. Who they actually became after those two left. Oh. Uh, Buddy in the Belmont, for example, is one who just was sick to death of waiting for you to start hamming this around in your mind. What category would you like, buddy? Hello there. Hi. Uh, the, your big band, uh, your question about Ella Fitzgerald, Tuscan of Tascom? Yes. Chick Webb. Chick Webb is correct. Correct. Very good. What question do you have for us? I have a question for you. What's the definition of a big band? Oh, that's not, I don't, that's not really a, a question. Uh, oh. Most most big bands are composed of uh, usually 16 musicians, but I, I don't know that there's any official definition of what a big That's band is. That's what it is. It's uh, five a brass, five, four, five saxes, and three rhythm at least. Okay, so so we're right. it's around Anything 16. If you say Tommy Dorsey, Benny Goodman, those are name bands. Yeah. Well, I mean, a big a big band generally is, a, is around 16 pieces. Count Basie, as a matter of fact. I uh, had a song called 16 Men Swinging, which was one of his tunes, that's, which was based around... That's the name number. band. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't even understand what the question is. You said, what's the definition of a big band? Yeah. And I said around 16 musicians. Yeah. Okay, thank but you very much, buddy. Let's go to uh, Terry in Weymouth. That really is not a really a legitimate question. <clears throat> uh, anyway, but I won't argue since we got it. Terry in Weymouth, you're on WBC. Yes, I know him. Hi, Terry. Okay, I've got a question from uh, in the uh, Broadway musicals. Oh, you, you oh. okay? You want to try? The, 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 I guess we don't have anything There's outstanding there. I guess so. I'll give you a new question okay. then. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, here are three songs 
uh, from Broadway shows. Just name the shows for two. Name name just two out of three. Okay, what shows they're from? Uh, there's nothing like a dame with a little bit of luck, and I could write a book. Just pick any two out of three and tell me the shows they're from. Let's see, South Pacific. Uh, is what? Uh, nothing like a dame. Right. And what was that second one? It was uh, with a little bit of luck. My fair lady. My fair lady. That's right. The third one I could write a book was Pal Joey. Pal Joey, right? Okay, good. What What do you have for us? Let's see. Um, what John Wayne movie was uh, made into a uh, Broadway musical? Wow, mm -hmm. that's an interesting question. I I don't recall anything John Wayne was in. Mm -hmm. Which one? No, was it a pink? No, and was it the one where he sang? No, no John Wayne never sang. Did he sing in a movie? Did he sing? <laughs> I mean, did he sing in a movie? If they asked me, I could write a book. Woody, I can't imagine. It was bad enough getting Clint Eastwood singing yeah, no. in my you know, Paint Your Wagon. Paint Your Wagon, yeah. Paint your wagon, yeah. No, I, I have no idea. What 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 was that? Yeah, the old it long the... pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in Ireland. It was The Quiet Man. Oh. Was that made into a musical? Right, and the, ty the uh, name of the show was Donnie Brook. Oh boy, that is a remote one, isn't it? I did, I did. That's a good question. I didn't know that. Question. Do you have any idea who wrote that? No, no, I don't. But I, I have seen the um, the album, the cast album, but I can't quite remember the. Yeah, uh, Donnie. No, it. no, I do remember that there was obviously. Uh -huh. I, I know you. I know you. You know your stuff. There was a, a show, uh, with that title. Yeah. I but think so. okay, so you got that one. I know. I, I had. Uh, that's a good one. Okay. okay. Now I'll ask you one more then. Ooh. <laughs> no, no, it's not, that's not going to be it, because I, I want very much for you to win. Oh. Okay, let me see. Let me, okay, I'll ask you, uh, uh, in the Rogers and Hart musical Babes in Arms, <laughs> will you stop saying ooh, although it sounds kind of sensuous and I kind of like it, uh, there is a woman, they, talk, they sing about a woman who gets too hungry for dinner at eight and uh, who loves the theater, never comes late, and as a result, of uh, these personality traits. <laughs> what what do they call this lady? The lady is a tramp. The lady is a tramp. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> Very good. That's good. Uh, we almost burst out of the song yep. on that one. Okay, and as you, a result of these personality <laughs> traits. <laughs> Okay, so you you uh, you win the uh, certificate of award. Also the also the award. <laughs> wait a minute, the best. We graduated from Ooze to Oh. Uh. Yeah, Holy and so. also the uh, the peepers key ring. Okay, here's Mike Epstein to take the information from you. So hang in there, as we go to a uh, Kevin in Lynn. At incidentally two five four ten thirty is our number six one seven the area code. Line, lines are generally jammed, so if somebody is about to hang up, just to hit the button at that point. Yes, hi, how you doing there, uh, Kevin? Good. It's about time you brought your show up to date. Oh, that's Ask right. The, questions, uh, the music questions from the seventies. Yeah. The money song. I think I got the answer on that. Okay, money. Okay. Uh, I'll name all three. Name two out of three, and you win. Uh, not win. You get over the first round. Money, honey. For the love of money, and then money. Okay. Hmm. I didn't know it came in three parts. Well, Ooh. if you can name two, two out of three, three, you can do it. They're, they're different. Each okay. one is totally different. One was the OJs. Right. For the love of money, the OJs. Right. And second, money, money. Money, honey. Money, honey. Oh. Might have been the OJs again. Uh, no, no, it's some, someone else. There's a song called Money, just one word, Money. Very huge album cut. Um, just a gigantic album. Is song. Still I know what, I know the George. song. I can't recall the artist. <clears throat> All I knew was that the OJs did that <laughs> okay. one. Well, I could only get one out of three, but I think I got two. I know I got two out of the... You had asked on the rock and roll. I think I had two out of the three on those. Hmm. Okay, but you, okay, but you missed this one. I'm sorry, Kevin. Thank you very much. We okay. appreciate you trying. Okay, how about, uh, let's see. This is Beth, who's out in Michigan. Hey, Beth. Hey, Michigander. How you doing? Michiganian. Oh, is that what you oh. called yours? Michiganian. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. Michiganian, okay. Yeah, Michiganian. Okay. Uh, I, I think, someone uh, I think answer I'm that one about Ella Fitzgerald? Yes, that was Chick Webb. What band yeah, she sang yeah, at Tiscotica? Yeah, I know, because you still Webb. have the record. You still have the record, Adrian. Yeah. So you want to, is that your category, big band? Yep. That's okay. all my folks ever had in the house. 
Not the, the records, the actual big bands. Oh, the actual themselves. big bands were there. Okay, oh, yeah. the theme song. Whose who's band used this as a theme song? Racing with the Moon. Vaughn Monroe. Vaughn Monroe is correct. Can you okay. give us a little Vaughn Monroe? Racing with the moon, hop in the midnight blue. <laughs> we used to you. call him the guy with the muscles in his throat. <laughs> what, what question do you have for us, uh, uh, Beth? Okay, you'll get this right away. Now, I'm going way back here, Norm. Oh, well, I go way back myself to uh, as I race with the moon way back there. Yeah, around the turn of the century, I was <laughs> racing with the moon. Anyway, go ahead. Before he had his own band, who was the key arranger for Ben Pollock and Red Nichols? The key arranger for Ben Pollock. And Red uh, Nichols. I You're going to know I, it. Yeah, I, I, I should know it. Uh, it's either Woody Herman or uh, Glenn Gray. Uh, am I right for either one of those? And I'll take a pick if you... No. It's not either oh, one? No. Ben Pollock? Mm-hmm. Ben Pollock. Oh, that must have been Glenn Miller then. Oh, darn you. I knew you'd know. Well, no, no, wrong, I, I didn't get lost. it. No, I guessed yeah. other names first. I, so I'm wrong on that. I understand uh, that another uh, member of his uh, crew um, was uh, the one who uh, used to bring him in the money, the Lone Arranger, had his own radio. Oh, dude, oh, stop dude. doing bad jokes now. <laughs> Hold that for the dumb birthday game. Okay, I'll ask you one question, and if you get this, then you win also. Uh, Beth, how about uh, Stan Kenton's theme song? Do you remember the name of that? Um, uh, artistry and Rhythm. Exactly. Oh, exactly, right you, on, you right. devil. Hey, let's let's go. Do I get, do I get a peeper? Yes, you, you get a peeper's key ring, and you also get a badly misdelled, humorless, uh, mis on, the, on a bad bulky it. paper, yes, yeah, certificate of award. I already have three of them. Oh. <laughs> do you, do you, but you don't have a peeper's key ring. No, but I want to... We'll you'll get the whole set anyway. We yeah, we have to send four the whole certificates set. constitutes a PhD now. You know. <laughs> That's right too. Yeah, you can take it to the University of Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> hey, th thank you for calling. Hang okay. in there, and we'll get information uh -huh. from you. As we go to uh, Frank in Dorchester. Hi, Frank. You're on WBZ. Hi, I know. I'm. Geez, I can't believe I got through on a dial phone. You did, you did, son Is of a gun, sending new records, yeah. Old-fashioned, regular rotary dial, believe it or not. Yeah, <laughs> I have one of those at home, too, just for old times' sake. Yeah. What, what category would you uh, like? Rock and roll, and I wanted the one on the, the one about money. Okay, money, uh, money, honey, for the love of money, money. For the love of money <laughs> is the OJs. Right, And yeah. the last one is uh, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Excellent, very good, Pink Floyd. And the other one, by the way, Money, Honey, was done by the Bay City Rollers. I know I know that song. I just couldn't think of the group. I do, I was humming it in my head, though. I knew the song. Oh, yeah. But I didn't know the group. Very good. Now, let's have your question for us. Uh, what group in the 70s only did one song and then went out of existence? A lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah no lot. kidding. <laughs> Lots. Most Can of you them. Now, Tom? if I give you as a hint. No, you got, you got you're a little more specific uh, than that, Ken. They were named after an automobile. Uh, in the 70s? Yeah. Named after an automobile? Uh-huh. That's not a bad hint, I suppose. No, the Edsels did a song, but that was the... Uh, yeah, that was the Edsels and the Cadillacs. Right. And the, yeah. In the 50s. And the Oldsmobiles. Yeah. The Buicks. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you for a car. Uh, the now, let me... Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah. Just one more hint. Was it a brand name of a car, or was it a model of a car? I know you don't. No, we wouldn't. Uh, no, we don't. Which, uh, Let's stop fooling around. Trans you don't know. What is, the what's, trans the, what's, the, what's the answer? Uh, the, you're talking to me? Yes. Oh, okay. The answer was Skylark. Skylark from that song Wildflower. A Skylark? You mean like the bird? Like Buick Skylark. Buick Skylark. Okay. 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 Very good. Kind of a stretch, but what the hell. Okay, yeah. very good. The only thing I could think of, guys. That's all right. That's all right. I'll name uh, three songs. Can you name two out of three groups? The Love I Lost, Love Hurts, When Will I Be Loved? The Love I Lost is Harold Melvin and the Blue Note. Correct. And what was the second one again? Love Hurts. And the third one is? When Will I, when will I Be Loved? Can you, do you know the answer to either one of those two? I know the second one, and I can't, I can't bring it up. I'm trying, I'm trying to bring it up. Uh, okay, we'll give you only about five or ten more seconds. 
Nazareth? You are correct. Hey, you hey thank God you. I got it. I had it right on the tip of my tongue, too. <coughs> you win. Right. Okay, you made that. Good enough. You you get uh, all your... I can't believe it. I'm going to get a peepers key ring on. <laughs> okay, you are. You I are did Frank. it. <laughs> you are, Frank. Thank you very <laughs> much for you. calling. You know, Norm, okay. if you were, like, throwing these out of the crowd or something, you'd cause a riot. Uh -huh. You really I would. I know he would, yeah. Mary in uh, Worcester. Hi, Mary. Hi, Norm. How are you? Fine, thank you. What category would you like? I'll try the big bands. The big bands. And be as kind to me as you were to Helene. Oh, I, no, oh. she just happened to know. I'm, I'm kind to everybody, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. I am. I'm just a naturally kind person. Okay, who had the band which was called The Clouds of Joy? Oh, um, that's kind of tough, but I, I think you'll recognize the name. It was Da 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 and his Clouds of Joy. What was it again, Norm? <laughs> da 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 and his Clouds of Joy. That was his name, that Joe Da Da Da. There were that many <clears throat> syllables, Da Da Da? It wasn't just Da Da and his Clouds No, no, it's Da Da Da. It was the okay. two syllables in the first name and one yeah, syllable in the, the second. Accent? The accent is... Uh, <laughs> oh, the Da. <laughs> no, the first Da. Da Da. Da Da Da. Hmm. I we sound like a bunch know. of fools, don't we? Just <laughs> like I've Morse known code. every big band answer you've had tonight until this one. Oh, I'm sorry, so, Mary. I'm sorry. You have me stumped on that one. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody who knows the answer to that can use that as their lead-in question if you picked a big band. We also have jazz, and we have musical comedy as well as rock. And we have Doug in uh, Medford. Hi, Doug. You're on WBZ. Hi. How you doing, Norm? Good, thank you. Uh, what? I'll, I'll take rock. Okay. I had to step out of the room because the baby woke up. But do you still have the, the question about the heaven? Uh, right. Heaven knows. Heaven on the seventh floor. In heaven must be missing an angel. Heaven must be missing an angel is Tavares. Right. Heaven knows is Donna Summer. You are right. Very good. In heaven on the seventh floor is a one-hit wonder, Paul Nichols. Excellent. Do you have a question for us now? Okay. Uh, back in the 70s, who sang the song, um, Cher Cher La Femme? Dr. Buzzard and his original Savannah band. Very wow. good. Wow, that's pretty good. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. And I'm proud of that. So, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. That was a uh, that was a uh, just a classic. It was such an unusual uh -huh. song. It was. Gloria Estefan has it out on her new album. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. If only she had good looks, she probably would make it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what is the final question for no, you? No, we got that. That's it. Oh, oh that was the final question. You yeah. won. No, so, no, I didn't. No, we won. We we won. Oh, that's right, we won. I'm so, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just a little. He's going to send us here. a certificate. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Doug. Thank you very much All for right, calling. Thanks. Appreciate that. That was a great question. Yeah, yeah good, yeah. good question. Let's take a break for uh, some commercial stuff. We'll be back and take some more. Mm, uh, Quincy, hi, Carl. Hey, Norm. How you doing? Good, thank you. What category would you like, uh, Carl? Uh, the rock category. Rock category. Okay. Okay. Here you go. I'm going to name three titles, and you tell me uh, who performed them. Okay. Uh, two out of three, and you win. Don't go breaking my heart. Tricky D and Elton John. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Heart of Glass. Blondie. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My heart mm -hmm. belongs to me. You already. Mm -hmm. That's a bonus. That's a bonus okay. Yeah, you've already answered. Yeah. Barbara okay. Streisand. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, what's your question? Okay, on the sixties uh, song "My Boy Lollipop" by Millie Small. Who played the harmonica? Very famous person. We get this question once in a while. Rod Stewart? That's correct. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Carl. Appreciate you playing the game with us. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye now. Okay, let's go to, uh, and again, the phone number is 254-1030. Area code is 617. Bob in Medford. Hi, Bob, you're on WBZ. How you doing? Okay, we're doing okay. You have to talk softly. Are people asleep here or something? Okay, people are sort of asleep here, too. Anyway, what category would you like? Uh, rock play. Okay. All right. Okay, Bob. Midnight at the Oasis, Midnight Blue, Midnight Rider. If you can name two out of three of the performers. You Midnight, would advance Midnight Blues line. was my old theme song by Count Basie, but that's not the one you're asking about. That's right. All, of, all these songs in the 70s. Uh, Midnight Blue, uh, Melissa Manchester. Correct. Uh, Midnight Rider. Midnight at the Oasis. Let's see, Midnight Rider. Midnight at the Oasis was done by a very talented vocalist. I'm a fan of hers. Mm -hmm. I give that's a hint. It's a woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why you're a fan of hers. 
That's right. Otherwise, I would have said a fan of theirs or something. A fan of his. Yeah. yeah. Midnight Rider. I think you got me. Mm. Okay, I'm sorry, Bob. Right. Play. Thank you for Thank taking you. part. Okay, so any any of these questions that are unanswered, you can use them as your lead-in question. And we also, don't forget, we have musical comedy and as well as jazz as other categories, too. Todd in Walpole, you're on WBC. Hi. How's it going? Hey, I think it's going okay. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Well, category rock, I bet you. Uh, hey, that's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. man. <laughs> Do you want to try any of the questions that are still on the board? Yeah, actually, that last one would be good. Okay. Um, Midnight at the Oasis. Okay, that's uh, Maria Mulder. Right, Mulder, right. Okay. Midnight Blue, uh, like you just said. Melissa Manchester. Right. <laughs> and the last one, Midnight Rider. Uh, I don't know that, but is, it, is that the Outlaws? Maybe, or? Almond Brothers. Almond Brothers, okay. But you got two out of three, so that's very good. Do you have okay. a question for us? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Alvin Lee had a band. Uh, ten years after, mm -hmm. but after that band broke up, he created another band uh, with partially that name. Twenty, 20 years later, <laughs> fifteen, <laughs> 15 <laughs> years down the road. Oh, wait a minute. Mm. Uh, wait, say, say that again. That last part of that question. He created okay. a band. After, after ten years after, yeah. he created another band. Like I think it was like a year right after that, and. It had most of the, the first name, or, yeah, the first name of the band, but he changed, like, one of the words around. Or he changed one of the words to a different word. So maybe instead of ten years after, yeah. it was... No, it's just, it's just like, right there in front, and I can't... I know I don't know it. I can't remember it. Ten uh, okay, oh, yeah. Okay. The answer is ten years later. Oh! <laughs> I said twenty years later. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Okay, well, you got us. Now, here's your final question. Okay. This is for the certificate, so please stand. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, this, here you go. Dreams, next one. Dream on, next one. Dream police. You can name two out of three. Uh, dream police was Cheap Trick. Mm -hmm. Cheap Trick, correct. And Dream on was Aerosmith. Right. All right. A winner. Excellent. And the third one was who? Dreams. Dreams by. by uh, I have no idea. By Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood well, Mac. Yeah, okay, yeah. you're a winner. You're a winner, Todd. All right, great. Son of a gun. <laughs> hey, thanks. Thank you for calling. Uh, John in Arlington, you're on WBC. Hi, John. Good morning, guys. Morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good, thank you. What uh, category? Well, uh, big band and... Uh, the Clouds of Joy, that was Andy Kirk, wasn't Andy it? Andy Kirk is correct. That's uh, right. Okay. okay, what question do you have for us? Well, this is for you, Norm. Okay. Uh, Tommy Dorsey, one of his, three of his greatest hits, they sold a million. Who was his lead trumpet player on Marie, Who, and Song of India? Charlie Shavers. No. No? No. <clears throat> oh, I was so sure of myself on that one, too. I thought everybody was going to say, ooh, yowie, yay. No, it but it was not Charlie. I'm wrong then, but who was it? It was my man before he drank himself to death about five years later, Bunny Berrigan. Oh, Bunny Berrigan. Yeah. Son of a gun. Okay. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask you one one final question. If you win this, get this, you get the Peeper's key ring and a swell certificate of award. Okay. Printed on, don't forget, it's the, the nice thing about it is printed on cheap paper. Yeah. <coughs> suitable yeah. for framing. Yes, it's yeah, really right. kind of unsuitable for framing, which makes it a, a, a special premium. Almost like our money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, here's, this man wrote and arranged the Dipsy Doodle for Tommy Dorsey, and he wrote and arranged a thing called A Study in Brown for Glenn Gray's orchestra, and then organized his own band, and who is that? It would have to be Mr. Clinton, but Mr. not our president, Mr. Larry Clinton. Larry Clinton is absolutely ah. correct. Correct. Oh, right. very, very tonight, very Norm. Good. Yeah, you're really, we're really humming. Yeah, I guess oh. we are. Okay, you you have won all that stuff. I wonder if I got enough peeper key rings at all. <laughs> no, I'm making these discounts. If not, we'll send you peepers. <laughs> we'll, <all send> you <laughs> we'll go out to Norm's bog and dig them that's up. Right. That's right. We'll send you the peepers and a tape recorder. You record your own sound. <laughs> we'll humanely put them on the key ring. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, is it Dieter in Maryland? Dieter? Yes. Dieter. <clears throat> yeah, I talked to you last week. Uh, it just happened to occur to me that there's a uh, group of uh, Clinton and Dipsy Doodlers in uh, D.C. right now. 
Son of a gun, we're going to ch change this whole program to politically oriented kind of stuff, aren't we, too? And you're going in the wrong direction. If you want to make jokes about Newt and Gingrich, that's okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Anyway, uh, what category would you like? Did, did anyone answer the question about uh, midnight? I think no. Uh, uh, yes, someone yeah. got that. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, well, let me try another rock one. Another one? Okay. Here's one for you. Um, three songs from the 70s. My Sharona, My Sweet Lord, My Thang, spelled T-H-A-N-G. Mm. My Sharona, My Sweet Lord, My Thang. Uh, George Harrison's My Sweet Lord. Right. And, uh, oh, The Clash, My Sharona. No, it's not The Clash, no. The Car? No, you no, can't tell me. Can I ask not, you a question? Go ahead. Uh, Love Hurts at Nazareth recorded in the 1970s before they made it a hit it was nominated for a Grammy in 1973 who sang it? Wow um, well, I, I think, think you can hear it uh, 1973 nominated for a Grammy mm -hmm. uh, um uh, I don't know. Got me. Okay, who's who's that? Ed? It was Graham Parsons and Emily Harris. Okay, detour. Thank you very much for the Got call. It. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, uh, anyway, the the category says you know, are uh, rock and roll, musical comedy, jazz, big band. You can pick any category you want. Just have to stick with it throughout the the three questions. John in the uh, and in his car. That's where John is. Hi, John. What category would you like? I'd like to try rock, please. Okay, here you go, John. Here's the three song titles and tell me who performed them. Two out of three is okay with us. Okay. I want to be I want to be with you. I want to be sedated. I only want to be with you. Oh boy. Wanna is the key word oh, yeah. in this collection. <laughs> so we didn't have an I want a boogie. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> How about I want a midnight blue? Something like that. The song. The first one was "I Wanna Be With You." Right. Hmm. No idea. Uh, next one, I want to uh, be sedated. No. Okay. Can I uh, ask you a question? Yeah. Well, no, I think because I, I I would like to get as many people on as possible. I appreciate the fact you have a question, John. Save but, it for uh, the next time. Yeah, save it. That's right, because we'll be doing this again in August. Okay. Two five four ten thirty. Gloria. In Malden. Hello, Gloria. Hi, how are you? Fine. I'm calling about the, the uh, herbs that you talked about. The what's that? The herbs, power vice and power mate. Yes. Uh, you gave the number. And yeah. I, don't, I, I don't think I tell it, tell it right. 1-500-578. 1-800. 1-800-578. 578. No. Hello. Hello. Bad. What is the number again? What is the name of the product? Power Vice. Power Vice and Power Me. Okay, that's 1-800-581, mm -hmm. I oh, believe, five, Mom said. Five, eight, no, I... Uh-huh. Okay, got that? Yeah, I got question. that. Okay, Gloria, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, you. Now, she missed the first question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to uh, Christian in Charlestown. Hi, hi, Christian. Hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, I'd like to try the My Sweet Lord questions. Yes, um, um, George Harrison. My sweet lord, George Harrison. Right, and the knack on my Sharona. That's right. And mm. I don't know the other one. My thing, James Brown. James Brown. Yeah. <laughs> my thing. Gotcha. Okay. Do you have a question for us? Uh, yes. Um, what was the first double rock album and what year was it released? Wow. First double rock album. All studio? Yes. So there was not like a double live album. Okay. Wasn't live. Huh. Double rock album. First double rock album. First double rock album. <laughs> Put it in pasta. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Right, wait, 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 would you no, give us three seconds now? No. Yeah, no, you, well, you, we've all repeated the thing about... No, I was going to add a guess. Do you mind? All right. Please? Go. go ahead, guess quickly. See, physical graffiti? No. Oh, uh, 1966, uh, freak, <laughs> freak Out, The Mothers of Invention, Frank Zappa. Oh, okay, final question then for you. Jeez. Okay. All right. <gasps> Here you go. Okay. Um, I'll name three titles okay. from the 70s. Yep. Damn it. Okay, here we go. Long, long time. Long, long way from home. 
long, tall glasses. Don't know any of them. Really? Okay, thank you very much for trying, Christian. Let's go to uh, Warren in Medford. Hi, Warren. You're on WBZ. Good evening. Good evening. What category? Uh, rock. <coughs> All right. Let, let me ask just one one rock question. It's sort of sort of a musical comedy rock, but it's basically rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the group that wrote the score for the rock opera Tommy. The who? Yeah, that's correct. That's right. okay. <laughs> Very good. Now your question for us. Uh, who sang the song "Free Love" in the seventies? Free love. Hugh Grant, no. <laughs> no, it cost him for <laughs> um, <clears throat> Free love. Mm -hmm. Can you hum a few bars? No, <laughs> don't hum a few bars. <laughs> Anybody know? Mm, okay. Uh, okay, shame on us. Now, one final question and then well, for wait, you. Wait, wait, we need an answer. Gene Kahn. Thank you. Gene Kahn. Gene Kahn. Anybody, okay, Is that, how's that sound sicker with you, uh, um, Do you guys know yeah. who Gene Kahn is? Never heard of him. Her. Really? Oh, her. Pardon me. <laughs> See? Them. Okay. All right. <clears throat> That's, yeah, not really in the trivia question range, but what we'll do is we'll give you one last question. If you win, you win. And uh, here you go. <laughs> what did you I'd just like, say? I'd like to make the rules very clear. <laughs> okay. In that case, don't mention them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, good times. Time in a bottle. Bad time. The theme here is time. That would be the. This is the time question. <clears throat> Good time, chic. Right. Time in a bottle. Kill Scott Helen. Mm mm. And what? What's the third one? Bad time. Bad time. You know that one? Who had the big '70s hit with "Time in a Bottle"? No, he already guessed a different name though. So maybe you can okay. guess the third. Yeah. Third one. Bad time. Bad time. Who who did that? I think you got me. I don't, I don't know. Okay, thank you very much for trying, Warren. Time That's in a bottle, even that, I know. That's just fairly. Yeah. I remember playing that myself on yeah. on some record shows. Okay, Kevin in the Foxborough, you're on WBC. What category would you like? I, I think I'd like rock and roll more. Okay. Okay. Would you like any questions that are still up on the board? No. <laughs> I don't remember time in a bottle either. Time in a mm. bottle? Okay. That's funny, yeah. That was almost a pop tune. I never thought of that so much as rock, but I, I remember doing it on the Muppet well Show. Yeah. It's really almost done. I remember. <laughs> on the Muppet Show. <laughs> it's funny. It's all, one of the few rock songs. It's almost done in waltz time. It's three fourths time, really. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, here's your next question Sweet Talking Woman, Sweet Home Alabama, Sweet Surrender. Okay, Sweet Home Alabama was the Allman Brothers band. Wrong. Mm -mm. Wrong? Oh. You're in kind of, well, but you're wrong. Oh, okay. Sorry, you get two more choices. What was Sweet. the other one? Sweet Surrender? Yeah, you even have two, there's even two songs called Sweet Surrender. Two different songs, both from the 70s. Two yeah. different bands. Two, two different band. bands, right. Okay. Yeah. God, I have no idea. Sweet, <laughs> all right. Uh, what was the... Uh, sweet, sweet Talking Woman? Sweet Talking Woman. God, I want to say the Rolling Stones, but I know that's wrong, too. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, no. I'm sorry, Kevin. Thank you very much. You, it's kind of you to take part in this. We'll take a break, and then we'll be right back and uh, play right up until... Which is obviously doing bad things. Anyway, every day is uh, somebody's birthday. And we know that. Bring Jack in. Oh, dear Vermont. Oh, let's see. We'll bring Jack in. You want to join in the course while I, I, I read this letter? It says, for dear Vermont teddy bear people, I received my Vermont teddy bear at the office. And he is great. My husband sent me the romantic bear with the flowers and the chalk that one of the nicest, most romantic presents I've ever received. Everybody at work was very impressed. <laughs> they said, do you have to have that, that bunch of hairy guys singing, though, along with it? Why couldn't they just send the hairy bear? The commercials are so right when they talk about the quality and care that goes into the making of these bears. The teddy bear people should be very proud of their work. These bears sure put a smile 
<laughs> in someone's face. And it's signed a Vermont Bear Graham recipient from New Jersey. You could put a smile on uh, somebody's face too by sending a birthday Bear Graham from the Vermont Teddy Bear Company. So do call the Vermont Teddy Bear Company at 1 800 829 B E A R. That's 1 800 829 B E A R. <laughs> Can one store be all bikes to all people? Think about it. I changed the batteries while the commercials were on and while you guys were singing. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's play the last few minutes of uh, the Swamp Music Quiz. We'll go to Bill in uh, Nashua. Hi, Bill. Hi, Norm. How you doing? Which category? Okay, we're, we're going to do big band musical comedy, and the answers are Spike Jones, Spike Jones, and Spike Jones. Excellent. Now, you have a question for us. <laughs> yes. No, no. Let me. What, what category would you like? Uh, I'll take uh, rock if it's Motown. Well, we, it, it'll rock of the 70s anyway. Would you take that? No, I'll take musical comedy. Musical right. comedy. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, Music fine. <laughs> okay, musical comedy. Uh, who composed the music for West Side Story? Leonard Bernstein. Leonard Bernstein is correct. You knew that was so seemed so easy. You thought it was a trick question. That's a comedy. Okay, hit us this with a question. Guy got stabbed to death. Okay, what? <laughs> ask, ask us uh, a question. Okay, one hit wonder involving a railroad accident. This is musical comedy now. Is it? No, I'm switching to rock. No, 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 no. It has to be the same category. Give me musical comedy. Musical comedy. Yeah, we have to stick with the same category, right? Yeah, guess. it's a rule set down by the gods. <laughs> okay. Um, well, who, who is the singer who's performed more comedic, popular rock and roll songs than anybody else? Musical no, comedy that, songs. That, that, comedy songs. A rock and roll performer who's... who's yeah, a who's popular perform music performer by far has more musical comedy songs than any other. Oh, no, no, he, see, he's, he's saying... Oh, I see. Yeah. Songs that are... Comical. Musically oh, from, comical. Oh, yeah. Musical. Not, in other words, Broadway musicals. Top 40. No, top 40. See? No. Yeah. Weird Al Yankovic, and then it goes back to... Uh, Ray Stevens. Ray, yeah, good one. Yeah, Ray, Ray Stevens. Stevens is the answer. Okay. Uh, that's who I am. All right, here's a final question then for you. No, no, okay. we got that. No, they won. We won. Oh, that's right, we won. I'm They're sorry. not too bright, but they won. <laughs> okay, Bill, yes, thanks a lot. He, he, okay, let, oh, I think that's about it. That's about it. We're coming up to the news in about a minute. Isn't that too bad? Oh, yes. oh, it's been just so fun. Draft. Hey, thank you very much, Ed Mullen. You'll be back for the Dumb Birthday Game at 3 anyway. Anybody else who wants to play the Dumb Birthday Game, we'll have an hour. We'll just talk. It's kind of open lines and that kind of stuff. And then we'll play the Dumb Birthday Game at 3. Sounds good. And Tony Nesbitt, thank you. If you will, we want to come back for 3 o'clock, that would be so nice. A call or something. <laughs> Do something, for heaven's sake. I'll call. listen this time. I have 500 children, and they never call me. <laughs> and uh, Mike Epstein, and thank you. Uh, also, because we'll be talking with you for the rest of the night, uh, Jack Hart. Uh huh. <laughs> you know what I hate when I, you go into a store and you say thank you to somebody. Hey, thank you very much for that. And they say, uh huh, just like you just did. <laughs> I hate that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. And I hate that too after oh, they apologize. Yeah, I hate when they say I'm sorry, you know, because you know they're not sorry. They don't really care. Well, anyway. Not me. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll take a break anyway for the. I'm pretty sure we affected the Vermont Teddy Bear Company's bottom line with that brilliant version of their commercial. It's still unclear if it was good or bad. And regarding power vites? Well, if Gloria's call was any indication, those profits skyrocketed. Closing the vault and leaving this world a little sillier than we found it. For everyone at Riverside Apartments in Medford, Bible songs and Yiddish freilichs, misspelled certificates of award, Peeper's key rings, both battery-powered and alive. Joe Santangelo, the Tobin Bridge toll-taker. Multiple-choice questions. Cats falling off the bed. Rules that were sent down by the gods. The Stompers. Freddy Boom Boom Cannon. Palisades Park. Waffle Iron-shaped buildings. Power Vites and Power Mate. The exclusive vacation town of Echinacea, in the Appalachian Mountains. Strand Pharmacy in Dorchester, Andrews in Wellesley, Duval's in Whitman, and Hal's Pharmacy. Jordan's Furniture, The Great Movie Night Shift, Vaughn Monroe, Da Da Da, and His Clouds of Joy. Ten years after, twenty years later, and fifteen years down the road. The Vermont Teddy Bear Company. 
two-thirds of the bunch of hairy guys, Jack Hart and Ed Mullen, and the man who is the god of silly pooks, Norm Nathan, I'm the other third, Tony Nesbitt.